Pascal Siakam could be out for up to a month with a right adductor strain. Fred Van Vliet's missed the last three games with lower back stiffness. And Scotty Barnes is coming up gimpy once or twice every single game as he struggles with that right ankle. The Raptors were going to need a hope and a prayer against two ex-All-Stars who left town on not so great terms. And they found one in Christian Coloco. 113-104. I'm going to give you my two key stats, my three key takeaways, and my player of the game. If you're new around here, my name's Robert. This is Pensari Basketball. Make sure to hit subscribe and like. Grab your coffee. Let's get to it. Less than a month into his NBA career, and Christian Coloco is already making Raptor history. Six blocks ties him for third all-time among Raptor rookies. Who did he tie? Vince Carter, Chris Bosh, who did it twice, Andrea Bargnani, and Jamario Moon. He's the first Raptor rookie in almost 15 years to hit six blocks. And given a few more minutes, I think he would have gotten that number two spot all for himself. Christian Coloco seems to get better every single game. Probably going to be the biggest beneficiary of Pascal Siakam being out. The team is going to lean on him more than ever. And, you know, one game sample size, but he was incredible. Shifting gears from Raptor history to NBA history, OG Ananobi, three steals, continues a trend of multiple steals every single game, but just how historic is it? Some context. There is no currently active player in the NBA who has ever averaged over three steals per game. Over the past 10 years, every single player who led the league in steals did so with a mark of under 2.5. And the last time that a player eclipsed three steals per game for an entire season, it was Alvin Robertson back when hand checking was still allowed over 30 years ago. So if OG Ananobi really wants that Defensive Player of the Year award, Averaging more steals than any player has in over 30 years would probably do it. First key takeaway, the Raptors defensive identity is really coming together. There are still some ugly moments. There's still some threes that Fred Van Vliet can't contest. Scotty Barnes' ankle is giving up blow buys into the paint. Yes. And now you're missing one of your more active and longer defenders in Pascal Siakam. Despite that, while this team may not look like it and the stats do not show it, I see the makings of a top two, top three defense on this team. And that is always going to be a very good sign going into the playoffs. Transition and defense, they do go hand in hand. The Raptors are the best transition offense in the NBA. They are the most prolific transition offense and it's largely due to their defense and their defense is creating their offense right now because their offense can't create shit. I think they can get a lot better. Thaddeus Young and Otto Porter Jr. as I mentioned in the last video are going to help this a lot. They're extremely smart. I just look at opposing players and I'm not sure how they're supposed to score. I see DeMar DeRozan getting sped up and I'm like, I haven't seen this guy sped up in a really long time. He's a really different player now than he was when he was in Toronto. Yes, it was possible to speed him up in 2017, 2018, but since going to San Antonio, since going to Chicago, he is a very different player. And to see him somewhat surprised by some of the doubles that they were able to throw at him, I think that was really interesting and probably a very promising sign if you're Nick Nurse and the coaching staff. My second key takeaway is the Raptors need to clean it up if they're going to win tomorrow. This was not a pretty game. There were two completely unforced errors by Scotty Barnes where he threw it into the third row. Fred Van Vliet seemingly cannot execute in transition and or cannot pass. He can't pass an alley-oop. Like I've seen him botch alley-oops for years now. I really did think he got better at it and he's trying them more. So I really do appreciate that from the heart. But seriously, we need to clean up some of these passes. There were a few transition opportunities that the Raptors absolutely blew tonight. Alex McKechnie, please do something about OG Ananobi. I love OG. He's one of my favorite players in the whole world. But seeing this guy tumble and fall into the paint, lose his balance, there's got to be some sort of yoga or something that we can do to get him to be on balance. I feel like this is one of those toys where you have to take him apart like Humpty Dumpty and put him back together again. All of his coordination on defense, on offense, it looks like he has two left feet. This is something that needs to be fixed. I feel like I, this is not a mental issue at this point, right? I mean, this is physical. I just, I can see it in the way that he moves that he's a little bit off balance, but it seems to be just every single time he has this idea to do something, his legs cannot coordinate with his head. So I would just love to see the Raptors do something about this because I've heard for years about this incredible medical staff and training team. I just seem to find this one red mark on their record books is that how come 
this guy who came in fairly coordinated as a rookie has just become progressively less and less coordinated as he goes. It's just really weird to watch year after year. After year. Fred Van Vliet and Scotty Barnes play a combined 80 minutes tonight, despite the fact that one of them is coming back from an injury and the other one is still hurt on that ankle. I do not understand that. This is irresponsible and somewhat reckless for Nick Nurse to be doing. And frankly, I'm not a trainer. I understand I'm not a former coach of the year. I'm just a human being who has seen the progressive overload of playing massive amount of minutes that what that does to a body over time. There are players like Tracy McGrady who played tons of minutes in Orlando. There are players like Jimmy Butler who played a lot of minutes in Chicago. And frankly, they have looked older than they are later into their careers, earlier in their careers. So by the time they were 27, 28, they really did seem to be much older in terms of their injuries and how they were moving. If you lose a game in November against Chicago, it's not the end of the world. There are plenty of bad teams coming up. If you survive this stretch without Siakam and emerge sometime around the All-Star break, around 500, what have you really lost? I understand that Nick Nurse is a competitor, that he wants to win all these games, and maybe there's something about Delano Banton and or Malachi Flynn and or Jeff Doughton Jr. that I'm not seeing in terms of how they fit into the defensive scheme. I do think that you would you could have gotten away with five to six minutes for one of those guys to spell either Scotty or Fred and with a back-to-back -back coming up tomorrow night, honestly, it's it's not, I don't think it's responsible. My final thought of the night is patience. I know this didn't look pretty for the first three minutes. Someone texted me saying, are we gonna score 25 points all game? I don't know. Look, this is the brainwashing that the media, the Raptors media has been doing for you all season. They've been saying, the Raptors, I heard a credible person say that the Raptors would be 0-6 if Pascal Siakam wasn't on the team. Personally, I know that that sounds like you're praising a guy, but to me, it sounds like you're disrespecting 16 other guys. There's a lot of talent on this team. I think Otto Porter, if asked to, could score 20 points for you on any given night. I think Scotty Barnes can do so much more than he's shown. OG Ananobi, Christian Coloco. There's so much talent on this team. Bobby Webster, Masai Jerry have done such a good job of assembling this team. And it's not just the guys who are playing, it's the guys who are not playing. Delano Banton, I already alluded to it. Jeff Doughton Jr., Justin Champagne, there's so much talent on this team. We sometimes ignore that. We try to prioritize this one player and elevate them above the rest. But to be honest, this is a team game. There's no I in basketball and there's no I in team. I know I sound really old school when I say that I really do like ball movement and passing the ball, but really, I do. As far as player of the game, you can go multiple ways here. Fred Van Vliet with 30 points and 11 assists in his return. Scotty Barnes with 19, 10, and 4. OG Ananobi with 22, 6, and 3 with 3 steals to boot. But just because I don't think there are going to be too many times that I'm going to get a chance to do this, my player of the game is Christian Coloco. 11.7 rebounds, 6 blocks. Honestly, the box score doesn't capture it, but I guarantee you he was incredibly impactful. If you want to learn more about Christian Coloco and why I think he's so incredible, be sure to check out the video analysis I did last week where I actually break down game film from Philadelphia 76ers game, 45 seconds. I think he's doing things out there that people just aren't noticing. But I'm telling you, when this guy puts it together, there's two things really holding him back right now. One is strength, two is shooting. I know he's a good shooter, absolutely. I've seen him in the gym, he can knock it down. He's got a really solid form. Don't let that air ball tonight fool you. At some point, he's gonna get comfortable taking these shots in the game and it's gonna come together for him. The second thing is strength. There's so many times that he has inside position for a rebound and he just gets nudged out by a grown man last second. He may be 22, but again, physically, he's not quite there. We've seen this with a lot of other players before. I'm telling you, when this guy figures those two things out, every other part of his game is gonna shine, which means the short roll passing, the creation, the intelligence, the rebounding, the shot blocking, it's gonna to come together. And at that point, Raptor fans, you're going to have a very special one on your hands. There's a reason I've been ranting and raving about this guy for two, three months now. If you wanna learn more about basketball and you think that I'm the person who can help you do that, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel. It does go a long way. Some of the videos actually took 30, 40 hours and they're really game analysis and they take a very long time. So 
all of the support really goes a very long way. Let me know in the comments below who was your player of the game tonight. I'm sure we could have a healthy debate about three to four different guys. And as always, make sure to hit subscribe and like. It really does help this video get out to more Raptor enthusiasts like you. Till next time, peace.